Welcome to this Frequency Matters, the Hour for Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the July software and design-themed issue. As a reminder, the cover feature is Enhancing Sub-Terahertz RF EDA Workflows for 6G Challenges, written by authors from Keysight Technologies and Strataset. Eric, uh, what do we have for our product feature this week? Thanks, Pat. Uh, Yeah, we had a good product feature from Sin Matrix that was right on point with the theme. They've upgraded their capabilities and existing functions to include automatic 3G geometry workflows for substrate integrated waveguide filters. And uh, a number of features of substrate integrated waveguides are driving a big uptick in the popularity of that topology for our filter design. Uh, So the article gets into the details along with some examples of what you can do with their analysis tool. Uh, So that's an interesting tool to have in the toolbox. Yeah, and we had uh, three tech briefs. We had uh, Vita 67 multi-port connector blocks that enhance reliability from Fairview Microwave. We had adjustable control components that address multiple applications from Pasternak. And finally, a 2 to 18 gigahertz coaxial combiner divider rated a 200 watts CW from Whirlitone. And so for this episode, we had a special guest join us today. Robert Dandera is Product Marketing Manager at Analog Devices. He joined me to discuss their new wideband mixed signal front-end platform, the Apollo MXFE. Let's take a look at a clip from that now. So uh, ADI made a huge announcement at IMS this year, introducing the new wideband mixed signal front-end platform called Apollo MXFE. So can you tell us a little bit about the new products here and what are some of the key specifications? Sure. So Apollo MXFE consists of two different variants today, and we're developing a a host of wideband transceivers under this trade name, Apollo MXFE. So the first two parts is the AD9084. This is our widest band transceiver. So this is a 4T, 4R device that can sample at 20 gigasamples per second on the ADC and 28 gigasamples per second on our DAC. The RF bandwidth is from DC to 18 gigahertz, and the instantaneous bandwidth on that device is up to 10 gigahertz. The second variant is the AD9088. So this is an 88R in the same package as the 44R, and this device can sample at 10 gigasamples per second on the ADC and up to 16 gigasamples per second on the DAC. The RF bandwidth is is significantly close to the 4T4R. It's actually up to 16 gigahertz. So it's exciting that we can now direct sample to X band with the 8T8R variant as well. And the instantaneous bandwidth is about uh, four gigahertz on the 8T8R part. So the analog devices MXFE is one of the most highly integrated products we've seen on the market. So it'll be very interesting to see all the applications that it's used for. Turning to the news, Yol Intelligence released its overview of Semiconductor Devices Industry 2023 report. According to the report, the trillion-dollar semiconductor industry is poised to do a new cycle of growth fueled by breakthroughs in things like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, 5G, and specialized applications. But the semiconductor device revenue peaked in 2022 at $573 billion and is expected to retreat 7% to 5 134 billion in 2023. Also in the news, I saw that DARPA has selected 11 organizations to begin work on the next generation of microelectronics manufacturing program. The phase zero effort will establish foundational research to inform next steps toward creating a domestic center for fabricating 3D heterogeneously integrated microsystems. And the selected teams were Applied Materials, Arizona State University, Bridge, HRL Laboratories, Intel Federal, North Carolina State University, Northrop Grumman Space Systems, Northrop Grumman Mission Systems, Pseudolithic, Raytheon Technologies, and Teledyne Scientific and Imaging. Eric, how about you? What did you see in the news? Well, addressing some additional market news, Deloro Group released a report on the microwave transmission equipment market, and they forecast that revenue in the next five years will be 12% higher than revenue in the last five years. So that's uh, trending in the right direction. And this is being driven by India and uh, 5G deployments with the biggest growth in E-band to satisfy the increasing demand for data. And uh, not to let the cat completely out of the bag, but keep an eye out, and we'll have more about this development in an upcoming issue. 
Uh, I also saw that 5G Americas unveiled their update on 5G non-terrestrial networks report, which details the thoughts from the 5G Americas organization on architectures, status, standardization, new radio and IoT support in 3GPP release 17, NTN enhancements in release 18, and a whole host of other topics as the uh, wireless and satellite industries start to hammer, hammer out that common ground to enable all the opportunities that everyone is talking about. And so uh, turning to events, as I said in the last episode, I'm heading to the IEEE EMC SIPI event, and it's in Grand Rapids at the end of this month. I think I said Cedar Rapids last time, so correction there. So I'll be catching up with the latest technologies in the microwave journal side and also Cisco Integrity journal side. So watch for my event report coming out in a couple weeks. And uh, just a reminder, EDICon Online takes place every Wednesday in October, covering topics in RF, microwave, signal integrity, power integrity, and EMC EMI. And note that continuing education credits with IEEE are available by watching our technical sessions live. Uh, so please mark your calendars for that. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is Analog Devices, a leader in the design, manufacture, and marketing of a broad portfolio of high-performance analog, mixed signal, and digital signal processing integrated circuits used in virtually every type of electronic equipment. And uh, remember that as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you aren't already a reader. And thanks for watching, and please join us next time for another Frequency Matters.